The Nyko intercooler stand for the Nintendo Switch was announced so long ago that I thought it had been scrapped. I mean, does the Nintendo Switch even have any serious heat issues? Are people's consoles turning off due to overheat protection? I didn't think so. But there was one thing that did interest me. The Nyko intercooler allows the dock to be used horizontally. It intrigued me enough that I picked one up when it finally launched nearly a full year after it was announced. So how does it work? Does it actually help with cooling? Let's take a look. The first thing you'll notice when you get it out of the box is that it's probably not worth the $40 Australian that I paid for it. It is a pretty basic piece of plastic with a tiny fan and a proximity sensor. The plastic doesn't even 100% match the dock itself, which has a glossier finish. In the box is the intercooler itself, a USB cable pre-attached, and a small felt sticker which I thought was for protection, but the placement instructions seem to indicate that it ensures the proximity sensor does not trigger when there is no switch docked. To its credit, the proximity sensor seems to work accurately. I have a modified clear plastic back on my switch and that didn't seem to affect the sensor's function. Rolling on with the positives, I do very much like what the dock looks like in its horizontal orientation. The large vents down the bottom and the slight angle of the switch, it makes it look like a more powerful machine. But as you'll soon see, the intercooler doesn't actually provide any additional performance from the supposed increased cooling capacity. The installation is quick and easy, it simply replaces the little flap already installed on the dock, and like that little flap, the intercooler can be swung open to give you access to the HDMI and power ports. There is an issue with this though, due to the way the intercooler is designed, the cables can now only exit from the side. This does put a damper on the looks of the horizontal orientation because you'll have to angle its position to try and hide the cables. Now for the cooling aspect. Docking your switch triggers the proximity sensor that automatically starts the fan up. The fan runs at one speed and it is incredibly noisy. This is far less sophisticated than I remember being claimed when the product was announced ages and ages ago. I believe it was originally planned that the fan would only turn on when it sensed extra cooling was needed, and I'm not sure why this couldn't have been achieved by replacing the proximity sensor with a simple temperature probe or similar. Thankfully, the intercooler has an on-off switch, so you don't need to have your head rattled by the fan noise constantly, but this takes away any kind of convenience associated with it. If you have to keep getting up to press a physical button on the intercooler to turn it on and off depending on your cooling needs, that's going to annoy you pretty quick. You'll be glad to hear then that you don't have to do that, because the tiny noisy fan in this intercooler doesn't actually provide any additional cooling, at least not evident in my testing. To run a simple test, I first docked the switch without the intercooler attached and ran Splatoon 2 for 20 minutes. To make sure the load was consistent between tests, I used the intro section with Pearl and Marina, mainly because I've noticed the fan in my switch spin up quite loudly when this sequence is playing out. I used an infrared temperature sensor in multiple spots on both the front and back of the console before switching the console off and letting it rest. Then I did the same with the intercooler attached in horizontal position, both with the fan running for the entire 20 minutes and with the fan turned off. Not only was there essentially no difference between having the fan on or off, but even with the fan on, the switch was slightly hotter after spending the 20 minutes in the horizontal orientation than it was just without the intercooler attached. Though we are talking about a degree at most here, so I don't think it's anything to worry about. Now I was testing this on an open tabletop with plenty of fresh air for the console to use. Could the results have been different if it wasn't a cramped space, say underneath a television? I'm not so sure. I mean, maybe if you have severe airflow restrictions where you place your dock, it might help ensure the console is getting enough air, but the Switch is capable of running with both its vents mostly blocked, so I have a hard time believing you would ever run into a situation where the airflow would be so restricted that you would need this tiny noisy fan. So should you buy the Nyko intercooler for Nintendo Switch? No, not at its launch price anyway. I don't believe it provides any cooling or performance benefits, and if that's what you're after, definitely don't buy it. But if you're looking for a way to dock your Switch horizontally, and you don't have access to a 3D printer, the intercooler might be worth it if you find a good sale price. <laughs> 